the, these next 13 games, which we've been talking about, the Red Sox, the Phillies, the Red Sox, and Rays, and then after that, I think they have like Miami, Seattle, uh, and then they have another bad team in there too. I think the the Orioles are in okay. there. Okay. So so they have these 13, which I believe you know they got to go eight and five. If they go nine and four, that would be great. You know, I don't am I and am I. You know, is a pie in the sky. I mean, if they want to save their season, that's what they have to do. Absolutely. They have to be the competitive team that they were in Houston. You know, that's it's as simple as that. They have to be that team coming out of this break. And they got the Red Sox at home. They've been swept six straight games by them. They got to get their act together. And, they, you know, they got to take at least three out of four from the Red Sox right now. And this that would be a hell of a start uh, to the back half of the season here and then get them back on track. Um, you know, and then after that, after these 13 games – then come the next 13 games in, in, in a situation where, you know, you can have one of those, you know, 10 and three runs, 11 and two runs. If, if you're coming out of these top end games uh, with a winning record. So uh, these 13 certainly are really important. The next 13 right after that, they can get off to a unbelievable run. And, and by that time, we also see whether or not trades are going to be made and whether or not Brian Cashman feels like his team has got a chance. I just think there's so much pressure on the Yankees, by their fan base, by the expectations of the executives. You can just feel it right now. Can't you just feel it in the air? That they have to stay competitive. I don't see them going through a sell-off like they did a few years ago. That's not the case right now. They have got to stay competitive right now. (laughs) And there are moments where things like this happen for organizations that it can go one way or the other. I remember it was uh, Todd Bowles with the Jets. It, it was uh, Mickey Callaway with the Mets. Yeah, it never really works out for the Mets and the Jets in those I, moments, does right. it? Right. Well, it was obviously uh, David Quinn for the Rangers this year. I mean, yeah. like, there are moments in, in these for these general managers, for these coaches, where you know what has to happen. And if it doesn't happen, that's it. Yeah. I that's just it. don't know if... The history of Hal Steinbrenner running this team, there hasn't been that that's it moment yet. And this is when we we talk about the Yankees. I bring this up every time, and there's never an answer. If there was an answer, I would say it. But what is the thing that's going to clean house? Now, is it them? Who is is the guy that's going to clean house? Well, it would have to be Hal Steinbrenner. It would have to be him. Well, I think it would probably be Randy Levine in his ear saying, hey, look. Oh, yeah, we got to get it done. Yeah. We got to get it done. And we got to, we we can't be like just, you know, meandering around here like a lost franchise. I, if they don't win, you know, number one, Aaron Boone's not coming back because his contract's up. Now, when you say they don't win, is it meaning that because if, if they don't make the playoffs this year? All right, if they if they don't make the playoffs, that, that's now, basically what it comes down to. They have got they, they're. They what if they go to the much, ALDS and lose in three games? Well, that's a different story. Then you have to see how that all unfolds. You have okay. to see about decision making. You know who who are the players that are coming up big? Who are the players that are coming up small? That, you, but I'm talking about right now for the Yankees. They have got to make the playoffs. They have to. They have too much money invested in this well, team. For our they sales have, staff here, especially. They well, but they, but they have two $300 million players. And yeah. they have a lot of questions about other younger players that they've either traded for or came up through their system, like a Gary Sanchez and Aaron Judge, that they're going to have to have answers for. And, you know, to me right now, the, as listless as this team looked prior to going to Seattle, you know, they won the last game against the Mets. They they took the series from Seattle. They took the series from Houston. And I know it was an ugly loss because of one guy's meltdown. Yeah. And that one guy has been it kind of saved the bullpen for the last three weeks. Sure. Prior to that one game meltdown. And it was just one guy who just had a bad day and a manager who let him go through that bad day. So, and did not want to bring in Araldis Chapman because they're playing head games with him. Mm-hmm. So now I think what will be telling tonight, let's say they have a two to one lead in the ninth inning. Is Araldis Chapman up in the no. ninth inning against the Red? What do you mean? No, he's not going to be. I mean, what the hell are you paying him for? Well, you're paying him to be the closer, the and you later, want him to come later. back and be the closer. But everything we heard from Aaron Boone is we got to wait for that right situation, huh. and that right situation has not been a one-run game. That right situation wasn't a five-run game to well, end that, the first half. The right, well, that was the right situation. Well, it was wasn't like for Aaron Boone, Sunday, but it was for everybody else. Yeah, but it wasn't I, for him. Unless there's something wrong. With 
with Chapman that we don't know about. But then again, they would put him on IL. They wouldn't they wouldn't keep him in the back end of the bullpen just to eat up a roster spot. Oh, we'll see. I think they'll start working him back in slowly, and then maybe a three run lead in the ninth. You'll see him come in or I, something I, like I, that. I, to me, for the life of me, why he didn't pitch? And again, I, I don't want to keep a uh, you know screaming over spilled milk. As they say. Oh, that's right. Yes. But I don't know why, for the life of me, he did not start the ninth inning in Houston on Sunday. I, 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 I came in here Monday morning, so I'm being consistent about you this. Are, you are being so, very but consistent. Is, but it is a huge question mark right now for the Yankees. That That is, to me, the huge question mark is whether or not they can figure out what's going on with him and when are they going to use him again. And in these somewhere in these 13 games, he's going to be asked to go out there and try to do his job. And all I can say is that given where he has been, some of the things that he said after they left to go to Seattle, you remember, you remember some of the things that he said there? Of course. Um, and I and I understand the motivation for him, and he, he should use that as motivation. But, you know, the reality is is that the, the manager now is hamstrung because their highly paid, you know, 100-mile-an-hour fastball-throwing closer has been an absolute disaster. I mean, like, so now you're managing with one arm tied behind your back. And I, I don't know how – I don't know how they – you got to hope that somewhere along the next three or four games, he has an opportunity to go out and do what he's supposed to do and does it well and gets the confidence back. Because so that's really what it's all about. It's all about for those guys being able to flush a bad uh, a bad performance, like Edwin Diaz said last Sunday. I got to flush it, and I can't wait until Friday. And I expect to get the ball on Friday and to close the game. You know, he's seventeen out of nineteen, so you know he's actually had a really good year. I. I but for to the for the life of me, I don't know exactly what's going on with Araldis Chapman. All I do know is that it is kind of hamstringing Aaron Boone from late late inning decision making. Yeah, I don't believe that the Yankees are going to make the playoffs. I've seen. All right, well then you're going to get a new manager next year. I yeah, I I, I don't know. You At know, least a new manager next I, year. I think Brian Cashman is so ingrained in the Yankee oh, family but I mean, it, and has uh, been for so long and knows the inner workings and where all the dead bodies are and all of that kind of stuff. But I mean, it's so, what is he going to do? Work until he's dead? I, you know, look, he's the At one. At some built, point, you got to do something. He's, you know, you also have to remember. Maybe that, he wants to leave after this. Well, he may. He may be. I don't know. I can't speak. I think he loves his job, and I think uh, I would love that job. Just simply because it's one of the best jobs in sports. It's also one of the most pressurized jobs in sports because you have one of the most engaged fan bases in all of sports. Is it the most pressurized job in all of New York sports? The general manager of the New York Yankees? Probably. Because your pressure is always on you to win. And to spend money. And to spend money. And if you don't win, I mean, not, I mean, like, don't win championships. I know, but I, and I know they haven't won a championship since 2009. And I, I keep getting reminded of that. Uh, <laughs> but it's not easy. It's not easy to always go out there. But what you want, though, is you do want a level of consistency where you are always relevant throughout the seasons. And they have been that. You got, you have to give them that, you know, that they spend the money. And for the most part, they always do make it to the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, you know, they had the one year, the one blip a few years back. You know, you could scream and yell all you want about the Houston Astros and, you know, that that series against the Cleveland Indians where Joe Girardi didn't do the the right thing with the the replay and that whole thing. That was, that was awesome. They came back and they won that series. I mean, so there's a lot of really good things that have happened for the Yankees. But I give up. it's almost like I'm an, if I'm an Islander fan, I'm jacked about the way my team played the last two years. You know, they – they took the eventual Stanley Cup champion to six games the first year and then seven games this year. And you're saying to yourself, you know, if we could have gotten past the Lightning, we probably would be sitting here with two cups ourselves. Yeah, hey, and, yes. and, I, and, and But what I'm saying, like, I, in other words, I have a GM who knows what he's doing. Sure. And I, and I know that we're always going to be uh, successful. We're always going to be relevant because I trust in the guy that's making the decisions. And I think for the most part, and I, and I don't want to put percentages on it because it's hard to say because we get a lot of negative talk on sports talk. But for the most part, I think most Yankee fans – now, there's some Yankee fan driving right now going, he doesn't talk for me. Doesn't, I'm not trying to talk for you. I'm just saying most Yankee fans probably think that Brian Cashman does a reasonably good job. I don't know, man. I think that that has turned. I think the majority of Yankee fans are well, if sick you of it. If you would have asked two years ago, they would have said, hey, he's doing an awesome job. So he gets But Garrett that was two years Cole. ago. So he brings in Garrett Cole. He brings in, you know, Stanton when they made the trade for him. Everybody liked the trade for Stanton at the time. You know, everybody seems to forget, like, how these things, when they initially go down, how people react to them initially. And then <laughs> after about three years, things may change. But I do, I do know this. 
Watching Garrett Cole on Saturday in Houston, that is an ace, my man. That is a big-time performance by a guy that they gave $300 million to. And and to me, that's the that's the team that you want to see coming out of the break here. Are they making the playoffs? I say right yes. now, put your put your balls out there, man. I'm, I did it. Yankees aren't making the playoffs. Well, I don't. I don't have to do that. Yeah, you do. But, not, but yeah, I believe they will be making the playoffs. So we have a different opinion. Yes. Wow. Okay. I'm not saying they'll win the division, but I think they'll make the playoffs. Okay. So you think you're gonna they're gonna grab a wild I, card? I just think that they have to stay relevant. They just they have to. And I and I do believe that the comments by Hal Steinbrenner last week, the comments by Brian Cashman last week have now filtered down to the players. The players hear it. The players know it. Uh, I don't know whether or not Aaron Boone is a guy that is going to get into the face of his own players. I don't think that's why he's there. But, um, you know, and his contract is up at the end of this year. So if they like playing for him, they better start showing it against the team that has basically beat them six straight games.